Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, I figured that we could maybe play around a little bit furthermore with the topic 14, which was uh, vertical transportation and service facilities and maybe do some examples. Okay. Now I want to remind you about the topic itself. Um, wherever YouTube puts the link, that's where I'm going to put it, whether it's up here or in the description to this video. But you're going to find the link there if you don't uh, remember the video about this topic or what it was about. But I want to remind you that you know you've watched the video if you can name the superhero featured in that video. That's right, there was a superhero in that video. And uh, if you remember which one it was, then you're good. You remember the topic. Otherwise, go check it out. But just to talk a little bit about what vertical spaces are and what we're referring to when it comes to uh, this topic is I'm referring to vertical shafts for, say, the installation of plumbing systems and electrical system, mechanical systems, elevators, garbage chutes, linen chutes, dumb waiters, that sort of stuff. And where did I get it? Well, I got it from here, okay? Uh, under the definition for it, which also brings me to how did I know to find it there? Where do I find the definitions for it? Well, there's also going to be then, as I'm reminding myself over here, uh, another video that's now going to be linked up here, okay, wherever YouTube also puts these things, uh, about a video about how to find the definitions of words in the Ontario Building Code. Right? Great. So let's get on with this. Uh, I want to first have you go and find these two tables in the Building Code. Okay, so table 3.5.3.1 and table 3.6.3.1. I have them handy, but I'm going to just make them appear on the screen for you. You can pause while you go find them under Division B of the Ontario Building Code Part 3. These are the two tables you're going to be using that we're going to be using for our examples. So here are the tables themselves. It's okay that I'm being covered right now. Let's not worry about that. Let's talk about these tables. These are the two tables we're going to be using. Now, depending on whether or not there are going to be updates to the Ontario Building Code, some of the values in here may change over time. I'll try to update this with a new video. But the whole point of me showing these two tables for you is because you have to figure out which one we use. There are two tables. Which one do you use? So here's my recommendation to you. Okay, which one do we use for vertical transportation and service facilities? Do this. If you're looking into the fire resistance rating of either an elevator hoistway or a dumbwaiter, if those two items, if one of those two items appears, then you want to use this table, which is table 3.5.3.1. Okay, as long as it's either for a dumbwaiter or for an elevator hoistway. Everything else is the other table. So 3.6.3.1. This one here. Okay. Everything else is this table. If it's a elevator hoistway or a dumbwaiter, then it's this table. That simple. So let's practice that. We're being asked to find the fire resistance rating of an elevator shaft enclosure. Elevator shaft. So what information are we given? We're told that this elevator shaft goes through a floor and that floor is rated as one hour. Fire resistance rating of one hour. So because we're being told we're looking for the fire resistance rating of an elevator shaft, we know we have to use table 3.5.3.1. So let's bring up this table. Don't worry if it's covering my face. I can see it, no problem over here, okay? So we have the table here. There's a whole bunch of columns. So maybe let me clean up the column we don't need, right? Because we're looking at elevator. So that means we want to use this column, right? We don't care about the column I just removed. Okay, so we know that we're looking at the elevator. We have a floor at one hour. What we do is we go in the table and find one hour under the floor fire rating column. Then we move over to the column related to the elevator and wherever they cross, that's our answer for the floor. Sorry, for the elevator hoistway. So in our case, the elevator shaft needs to be rated at one 
hour. Okay. Does that make sense? Was that okay? Did that make sense? How about we try another one? Okay. We're being asked, as it says right here, the fire resistance rating of an elevator shaft enclosure. And we're being told right here that the floor this elevator goes through is rated at two and a half hours. So what are we going to do? First, we have to pick the right table. The table in this case has to be 3.5.3.1 because it's for elevators. Okay, the magic, one of the two magic words. And if you use that table, you can check it yourselves. Then the elevator shaft fire resistance rating has to be one and a half hours if the floor is at two and a half hours. But don't take my word for it. Let's do it together. Okay, we're going to bring up the same table here. I've removed the column that's not necessary because okay, we're just looking at the elevator. We go all the way down to the row that contains the floor fire resistance rating. So in our case, it's two hours or more. And then we move across to where the elevator column is, where it intersects. That's our answer right here. One and a half hours. It is supposed to be that simple. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do the fire resistance rating of a dumbwaiter enclosure. We're being told that the floor is rated at 40 minutes. What is then the fire rating for a dumbwaiter? Because dumbwaiter is another one of the magic words, one of the two, we have to use table 3.5.3.1. So, dumbwaiter enclosure, fire resistance rating, needs to be zero according to this table. Let's confirm. Here's a table in, in uh, that we're looking at right now. It shows right here. Okay, don't worry that it's covering up my face. But uh, there's that middle column we don't use this time, right? That's the elevator hoist way. We're looking at dumbwaiters only. So let me collapse the table if I could. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to first go down the floor fire resistance rating. We're told it's uh, 40 minutes up here. So we go to the row that says right here, less than 45 minutes. And then we move over to the dumbwaiter column and where the two intersect, that's our answer. In this case, no fire rating is required. Okay, that's simple. You've done well. If you're okay with the, the way I covered these examples, then you're good with using table 3.5.3.1. You're awesome. Then let's move on to vertical service spaces. So that's everything else that's not an elevator and that is not a dumb waiter. And as a reminder, what this is all about, as I'm trying to show in this animated GIF here, is wherever people are not meant to be. That's really the actual distinction. The whole point that you use one table over the other is that the table we just played with, humans are allowed and meant to be in those vertical access, vertical access uh, transportation facilities. Whereas when it comes to vertical service spaces, like you see here, humans are not meant to be there. And that's why the protagonist of this movie is able to jump across it because there are no humans are not meant to be there. So he knows that there's not going to be anybody in there. Okay. All right. So let's do an example. Let's find out, like it says here, the fire resistance rating of a mechanical shaft. If we're being told that the floor is rated at one hour. So first of all, we have to figure out what table to use. Because it's neither an elevator or a dumbwaiter, we're then going to use table 3.6.3.1. That's the critical step. Then, if you can find that table, you'll find that the mechanical shaft is rated at 45 minutes if the floor is rated at one hour. Let's confirm. Let's bring up the table right here. Okay. And what you do is you go down to the floor right here, the floor rating, which is one hour, and then you move over to the right column. And that will tell you where they intersect it's going to be 45 minutes for whatever vertical service we're looking at. In our case, the mechanical shaft okay, right here. It is that simple. So let's do another one. In this case, 
Let's find out the fire resistance rating of an electrical shaft, vertical electrical shaft, if the floor is rated at two and a half hours. Because it's neither an elevator or a dumbwaiter, we must use table 3.6.3.1. Good. From that table, we find that the electrical shaft, the vertical electrical shaft, needs to be rated at one hour if the floor is rated at two and a half hours. If the floor goes through is two and a half hours. Let's confirm. Here from this table, we go down to the whoops, the row for the floor where it has the right rating. Because it says here that it's two and a half hours, then we go down to the two hours or more. And then we move over to the vertical service space and that gives us one hour. Okay, so that's the answer right here. It is that simple. The critical thing is finding the right table. Let's see if there is one more. Yeah, let's do one more. How about we figure out the fire resistance rating of a plumbing shaft. If the floor this plumbing shaft is going through is rated at 40, 40 minutes. Because this is neither an elevator or a dumbwaiter, we have to use table 3.6.3.1. And that tells us, if we use that table correctly, that the plumbing shaft needs to be rated at zero, right? No rating is required. Let's confirm. You bring up the table, you see it right here. So then we find the correct row here that relates to the floor 40 minutes. So the correct row is 45 minutes or less. And then we move over to the column, which gives us a rating of nothing. Okay, that's it. It is that simple. I hope this quick video helped you out. I wanna thank you so much for your time. Take care, stay well, and have a lovely day. Thank you.